Hi everybody, I'm Mark. I'm uh, making my third video. I'm trying to explain what's going on with the coronavirus because some people don't really understand the magnitude of what's going on or um, there's, there's some math involved and I'm not a math person so I had to get some help on this video um, to explain it correctly. Um, so I'm going to try to put it into words why people should be concerned about this outbreak. Um, it's uh, I've seen people online that are very left politically and they're um, pretty accurate and on the ball with the political stuff, but they totally dropped the ball on this pandemic that we're having. Um, and I would like to explain why you should care, um, why you should help out, um, why you should self-isolate. Um, so we have, they keep talking about flattening the curve. So what does that mean? Um, I'm going to put it in layman terms. Basically, we only have so many ventilators in the United States. Um, we have some extra ones laying around in case there's a severe outbreak of the flu, but we only have so many in the United States. Um, a lot of these cases, especially as they keep doubling and exponentially growing, um, at some point, and this is what happened in Italy last week, and our numbers were not too long ago where Italy's were, I think it was a few days ago, we were a week behind Italy. Um, in Italy, they had to start determining who they weren't going to save because they ran out of ventilators, simply because they didn't have the medical staff to save everybody. Um, they didn't have the ventilators. Their doctors were exhausted. Some of those doctors were becoming infected. Um, there's only so many finite resources that we have. There's only so many doctors. Um, we need to stay away from other people so that we slow the spread. Um, hopefully that will stomp out the virus totally. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, nobody quite knows, you know, there's a lot of unknowns in science, um, but we do our best. Um, science doesn't have all the answers. There's gray areas, but we can go off of, um, different things like this virus, it belongs to the coronavirus family. Um, so which includes the 2003 outbreak of SARS and MERS. Um, so the benefits we have there, we've developed antivirals to SARS and MERS. And that actually, um, we, we are finding out now that I'm going to butcher this name. Remsipivir, I think it's, I believe it's called. Um, it's an antiviral for, um, SARS and MERS. It is showing, um, clinically, it is showing improvement for people that get this drug. However, they have to ramp this drug up. So, um, it, it's, it's something that will help the epidemic. Um, but like I said, it has to be ramped up, um, for what we're going to need. And as I go on in this video, you will probably find out why it's really hard to keep up with. Um, so what our overall goal is in the United States is to not become infected. By not becoming infected, you don't infect others. By staying away from others, everybody staying away, uh, it prevents people from other people from getting ill. So it slows down how many people get ill at once. Um, like I said, what happened in Italy is there were too many people that were sick that had to be um, on a ventilator they had to start deciding, you know, am I going to save the 20 year old? Am I going to save the 80 year old? Am I going to save this person or that person? Um, and it's true that the mortality rate is much higher in the 80 plus population. Um, and it's very low. Children are not really experiencing, um, severe side effects, um, from coronavirus. Um, even if you're under 20, it, the chances that you're going to experience severe, um, illness do this or need a ventilator is very low. It's not zero. So you do take your life into your own hands if you're out there and don't care about coronavirus because you don't know anybody that's 80 years old or older. Um, which brings us into our next point that it's not just 80 year olds, um, or older that have comorbidities, uh, uh which means, like diabetes um, and um, hypertension uh, or lung function problems. Um, if the hospital is overworked and the doctors are overworked and 
nurses, doctors, PAs, uh, laboratory tests, too, mu too much stuff is happening. Um, what's to say you, you don't get into an accident and need a ventilator and there's no ventilators left. So you could be 20 years old and, or a child or 30 or not in this high risk group. And if the hospital is overrun with sick patients, you're not going to get the care that you need because there's not enough resources. Um, so this is, this is, uh, you know, I mean, if you're saying, well, I'm self-isolating, what if your appendix bursts? What if um, a pregnant woman has complications during birth and needs a doctor to save her and generally something that would, you know, uh, be able to be easily solved in a hospital, but there's not enough hospital beds. Um, there's other, if you have the flu, if you um, fall off a ladder, uh, if the resources are strained, you're also in danger as well. Um, it's not just protecting the 80 year old population and above. It's, um, it's, it's protecting everybody. Um, you know, it's when you get tired doctors and nurses, mistakes happen, they become infected. Um, hopefully not very many, but, um, you know, if you're exhausted, things happen. Um, so I wanted to explain exponential growth. Um, this is, so this is math and I don't math well, uh, as Jimmy Dore says, I'm not a math surgeon. Um, so, um, I have an example of exponential growth and this was taught to me when I was a child. And I like this example uh, a lot. Um, I had a friend say to me, I'll give you a penny a day. Uh, so he'll give me a penny on day one. That penny will double for the next day. He'll give me two pennies on day two. He'll give me four pennies on day three and so on and so forth, doubling every day. Um, he's like, or I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. Which one would you rather have? And as a kid, I was like a hundred thousand dollars. Of course, you know, a penny is nothing. Um, but if you do the math on that, um, which I actually had help on this through a video, um, because I'm not a math person. So, um, so on day one, you're going to have a penny. You know, nothing. Uh, one week, it's $1.68. At two weeks, you're up to $163. Three weeks, you're at... It's backwards to me, sorry. $20,000, almost $21,000. By the end of week four, you're at $10 million. Um, exponential growth, as the number gets larger, the jump in the numbers get larger. Uh, for example, uh, on March 1st, we had 70 cases of coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, in the United States. Uh, today, March 17th, uh, we're up to 5,894 cases. Um, if you do the math, doubling that every 2.5 days, um, I should do the math, and I forgot the numbers already. So, see, I told you, I don't do math well. 5894 times 2. So, in 2.5 days, you're getting 11,000 people, 700... 11,788 people are going to be ill 2.5 days from now. Uh, another doubling. So in five days, we're going to have 23,000 people ill. In 7.5 days, so a week from now, well, 47,000 people ill. Um, and as those numbers get bigger, it gets the virus spreads a lot faster, obviously. Um, they were talking about, I think it was somewhere in the first or second week of April that we would have a million infected. I haven't done the math. I'm just going off my memory. Um, you can do the math. Um, it's still scary. Um, once these cases build up, and especially they're building up all at once, if you have, so the, um, the, the mortality rate, the rate at which people die for this virus is somewhere around 3%. Um, so if you're having 3% of the population of those that are sick dying, 3% uh, right now of 5,894 times 0 0.03, you have 176 people ill, which you probably can't see that because of the light, 176 people severely ill needing ventilators um, across the country. Uh, we can handle that. We have enough ventilators for that. But as these numbers grow, uh, we're eventually going to get it to a point that on average, the average hospital is not going to be able to have the ventilators ready for people that have severe illness and they're going to die. And like I was talking about in Italy, 
Um, that's what happened in Italy. They, it's not that they couldn't afford to save them. It's not that, um, it's not that they chose not to save them. It's that they physically didn't have the resources at the time to save the amount of people that were getting sick. And this is why they started socially isolating. And, um, China has done this and it's brought the numbers down greatly. Um, but if you don't have medical intervention when you're severely ill, you're way more likely to die. Um, and this is what we're preventing um, by just staying at home, watch TV, read a book, uh, you know, go out, go out into your yard, go, you know, go grill something. Um, but you don't want to come into contact with other people because when you do that, you risk passing the virus on and passing it on to if you're if you're isolating with your family, you can pass it to your family. Um like I said, 80% of these cases are, are asymptomatic. So you don't know if you have them unless uh, you have this, unless you get tested. And they're, they're saying now that the youth are actually the spreaders. They, they don't get sick, but they still spread it. And it's the older people that get infected that get seriously ill. And like I said before, it's not only, um, 80 year olds plus it's, um, there's been clinical reports of 23 year olds with no health problems. They suddenly die. Um, it's just, as I've been studying immunology, I see it's more of a, a gray area, which most of science is, which a lot of people don't understand. Um, it's a gray area. And sometimes people just, something is happening with their immune system, or they may have a mutation that under other circumstances, they would have never known about. Um, and they die from the virus. It's just, that's, that's the way things work. That's the way you just don't know. Uh, like science always says, this is generally what's happening, but it's always the possibility. So just because there's only 0.2% of the population that's under 40, um, dying from severe coronavirus, it doesn't mean that you will be fine if you get it, uh, if you're 20 years old. Um, so it is something to worry about. Um, don't panic about it, but wash your hands, self-isolate. And I will bring you another video, um, which is going to deal a little bit more with the actual science, um, just for an idea of why we are where we're at right now. And why is this different than Ebola? Why is this different than H1N1? Um, yeah, so um, I'll leave you with that. Thanks.